Since my YouTube channel Great Scott reached 100,000 subscribers, it is time to celebrate. And what better way to do so than with fireworks. But igniting those with a lighter is kind of boring for an electronics enthusiast. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a remote igniting system, which is controlled by Bluetooth through an app on your smartphone to light up a maximum of three igniter cords simultaneously. Let's get started. In order to light up an igniter cord, we need heat. Obviously, an easy, safe and most importantly cheap way to produce it is by abusing a resistor with a small value. Depending on the voltage source that you want to use, in my case a 7.4 lithium polymer battery, you need to choose your ideal resistor value. I tried a couple of different ones, from 1 ohm up to 10 ohm. And even though something like 2 ohm gets hot very fast, it also burns out just as fast which makes it not ideal for the setup. In the end, I went with 10 ohm because it might take a bit longer for the ignition, but it worked every time. Later on, those will be switched on by MOSFETs, which are controlled by a microcontroller, which receives the activation data from a Bluetooth module. This one is an HC06, which is very easy to use. I just hooked it up to a power source and connected the transmit pin to the receive pin of my FTDI breakout. If I pair my phone with the module, I can send all kinds of ASCII messages with the S2 terminal app. The module then receives them, spits them out and I can see them with the help of the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. Those messages will later act as a trigger in my code to activate the first, second or third MOSFET. But having to write them with the touch keyboard can be a bit annoying. That is why I used the MIT App Inventor 2 to create my own customized app to send out those code words with the push of a button. I started off with the main Bluetooth functionality, which was not created by me. I used an existing structure by Wada Kuai and all I had to do was to add three buttons which send out my code words Ignite 1, Ignite 2 and Ignite 3. Once everything was looking nice, I created the application and installed it on my phone. Then I got myself an Atmega 816, which is pretty much just a cheaper variation of the microcontroller of the Arduino Uno, with less space for programs. I uploaded the Arduino bootloader to it, plugged it in my Arduino standalone board and gave it power. Then I went ahead and started to write the code. Firstly, the microcontroller waits until serial data has been sent to it. If it gets data through the receive pin, it will check whether it is one of the code words. If so, it firstly checks with the analog read function on pin A0 aka pin 23 and the voltage divider whether the battery is over a set cutoff voltage. In my case, this voltage is around 6.7 volts. Not because the battery would die with a lower voltage, but because the 5 volt regulator stops working properly with anything below this. If the voltage is ok, the corresponding MOSFET is turned on and a time variable starts which increases slowly and turns off the digital pin aka the MOSFET after a given time. Then I uploaded the code with the help of my FTDI breakouts and created a small test circuit with 3 LEDs. After I was sure everything worked like it is supposed to, I created my final circuit where I included a fuse for the battery, in case anything goes wrong and there's a short circuit, a switch, a 5V regulator with smoothing capacitors, pull down resistors and resistors to limit the input rush current for the MOSFETs. And at the end I included those XT60 high current connectors which will make it very easy to attach the extension wires later on. The complete list of components, the code, schematic and everything useful to build something similar is as always in the description. I went with a robust metal case this time since we want to use this outside, in the dark, next to explosives. Firstly, I created 4 small holes on the back side of the case where I can later attach my battery with the help of zip ties. It is kind of like a backpack. Then I marked a nice spot for my switch, pre-drilled a small hole 
and then extended it to the necessary size with a big drill bit. Afterwards, I positioned my three XT60 connectors on the front sides and marked their place with a scriber. In order to create the cutouts, I drilled two holes in each position and used small files and a lot of time to make them look good. But because I will need three wire connections later on to also power a 0.5 watt high power LED, which will later help me to attach the resistors to the ignition cords in the dark, I also created a small gap for one female header. Once this was done, I used my saw to make a rectangle piece of acrylic glass and perf board with cardboard dots, which I secured with M3 bolts and nuts to the inside of the case. The acrylic glass prevents the circuit from touching the metal case, because, surprise, metal is conductive and would create a short circuit. Then I soldered 0.75 square millimeter wire to the three female XT60 connectors and thinner wire to the three female headers. I used sandpaper and acetone to clean the area around the cutouts and used two component adhesive to secure the connectors to the case. Afterwards, I created my circuit on the perf boards with the help of my schematic. But I didn't make a proper layout diagram. I just positioned the parts where I thought it would make sense and used solder bridges and a bit of wire to make all the connections. Once it was done and worked fine, I soldered the negative side of the XT60 connectors to the drain of the MOSFETs and another wire to the source. Then I mounted the board inside the case and also secured the battery and the switch. At the end, I placed my fuse in between the battery's negative and the negative Vago terminal, which connects the source of the MOSFETs, the board's ground and the 0.5W LED grounds together. Of course, there's also a positive terminal, which connects the XT60 plus pins, the switch and the plus terminal of the battery together. After I wired up the switch, everything was done and I only had to measure out a fitting length for the extension wires and solder the XT60 male connector with a male header on one side and a bigger female header with two 150 ohm resistors and power LED on the other side. And we are finally done! Now I can enjoy to light up not only fireworks, but more dangerous explosives from a safe distance. If you enjoyed this project, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign, stay creative and I will see you next time.